Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Uh, thanks for doing this. Sorry, I'm sorry it's at the same time as the council meeting on Ukraine, but I wanted to, and you may have said it at your beginning, it seems like at least as best I can make out, there's some other countries that have, that have made recognitions, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Nehru. I don't know if that's the case. And have you broken relations with them? Can you say what? I know that Vanuatu at one point recognized and didn't recognize. I guess I just want to sort of understand what, what you're thinking. Uh, if each country that has made such a recognition you've broken relations with, and if not, what, what made the Syria case uh, so you know unique to you? Uh, we don't have... Uh We've broken uh, relations with the countries that have recognized uh, those two occupied territories. We no longer have uh, diplomatic relations, neither with the Russian Federation, who is an aggressor in our uh, case, nor with uh, Nicaragua, Venezuela, Nauru, and now uh, Syria. As for a number of other countries, uh, Initially, uh, they recognized these two territories, uh, but then they uh, reversed their uh, decision, and today we do enjoy very good uh, relations and partnership with, uh, with those countries. Just one quick follow-up. I, I mean, I remember when there was the, the mission there. Have you tried, have you, have you asked any of your allies to, to, today there's a meeting, you know, going on about Ukraine. Have, do you have any desire to have it back on the agenda uh, of the Security Council, and have, have you spoken now that he's been in office, so, you know, almost a year and a half, to the Secretary General, do you have any idea what the view of Antonio Guterres is on this uh, situation? Well, I can assure you that Secretary General knows very well uh, the situation in Georgia, including from his previous capacity, and he had traveled in his previous capacity to uh, many times into those uh, occupied uh, territories. Uh, as for uh, as for the uh, other part of uh, of your question, uh, the international community um, surprisingly, uh, when in two thousand and eight uh, Russia invaded uh, Georgia and we had that war, uh, which ten years passed, and you all know very well. Uh, after the war, when the presence of the United Nations is mostly needed. We had the United Nations in Georgia. We had the United Nations Observer Mission in Georgia. But the Russian Federation blocked the continuation of the mandate. And we came to this paradox. There is a war. Needless to say that every war has a humanitarian consequence. And there is a need for United Nations to be there. UN is there. And UN is leaving. Leaving because permanent member of the Security Council exercises its right to veto a decision. Similarly, what Russia has done when it had vetoed other decisions in the uh, Security Council. Uh, the only security presence that is in Georgia for the moment is the uh, European Union monitoring mission. Now, this mission was established as uh, a consequence of the ceasefire agreement that was signed on 12 of August by uh, Russia, then Russian President Medvedev, uh, Georgian President, and uh, President of the European Union and uh, President of France at that time, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. Uh, that uh, six-point uh, agreement stipulated uh, presence of the international uh, security arrangement. Surprisingly, a uh, couple of weeks later, Russian Federation recognized those two territories as independent republics in order to not comply with the uh, six-point uh, agreement, which stipulated the withdrawal of the forces. But by recognizing those two entities as independent republics and then signing the agreements on permanent stationing of the militaries there, they again twisted uh, the law. And today, they teach us that we should accept the new realities. I mean, these are uh, the prerequisites of those uh, new realities. So the international presence for the moment that we have is the European Union monitoring mission. But that mission lacks the possibility of monitoring the other side of the dividing line, of the administrative boundary line. They are stationed on the side that is controlled by uh, the central authorities of, uh, of Georgia. More than that, international organizations do lack a possibility, particularly the human rights mechanisms, to go and check how things are on the ground. I've said many times 
that uh, I represent the Georgian uh, government. I represent Georgian people. I represent Georgia in this uh, organization. And of course, all of you have a right to ask uh, or question whatever I say. So therefore, I want international organizations to have access so that you yourself can go and check uh, how are things on the ground. But if the High Commissioner for Human Rights, High Commissioner for Refugees, other human rights organizations and the human rights instruments and mechanisms are denied the entry to those occupied territories by those who are exercising the, uh, exercising the actual power there, that means that there is something that they just don't want the international community to, to see. Therefore, last year, and again this year, uh, we passed a resolution in Geneva that explicitly calls for those instruments to be active and calls for the access to those uh, two occupied regions. I don't want to say one question is not serious, but one question is serious, and the other one is a, has to do with f uh, soccer or football. But the uh, the the um, I just when, when you said because uh, I do remember that veto of the of the mission that was in Georgia, and at least it was described at the time as having to do with the naming of the mission. That there, there was sort of a showdown of whether the word Georgia would remain in the in the mission. Um, it was decided to keep it in, and it was vetoed. Maybe it would have been vetoed anyway. Do you have any in looking back at it? Was I mean I know the name is important. Do you think that was the real ground for the veto? Do you have any? Are there any kind of second thoughts about about the? They they, they said very clearly that if the name rem, remained that, they would veto it. I'm not sure if they said they would put it up with it on on any other grounds. But well, they say many things, okay. but what what remains is the actual the uh, action. They didn't want anybody else to be there, uh, and that's why they uh, they vetoed it. Gotcha. And the other one, this is the this is the soccer or football question, and it has to do with one. Obviously, the the World Cup is coming up in Russia, and I'm wondering whether you think that this issue will kind of either get some traction or there's anything you're asking countries to do. But I also noticed that that Abkhazia is a member of some counter federation called CONFIFA that's having a a, a, a tournament in the UK, and it includes a lot of northern uh, uh, Turkish Cypriot Republic of Northern Cyprus, a variety of of kind of of what they would consider contested or in some cases just non-FIFA members. And I wonder, do you think, I was surprised to see that there, there seemed to be some dispute whether they would get visas from the UK, seems that they will. What's the status of, of, of the people that live in the territory that, that is Abkhazia, that you say is Georgia and that uh, these handful of countries say is not? How do they travel? Well, under what passports do they travel? And do you have any thoughts about this upcoming CONFIFA uh, alternative World, World Cup, including, apparently Abkhazia won it last time, so you maybe, I don't know if you feel proud of that or not, but uh, well, I have what can no, you say about this? I have no knowledge of con FIFA. Uh, okay. Well, when there is something con, you know, usually it raises uh, you know, some questions, con, con artist, con FIFA, I'm not sure what, what, what that is. Um, as, for, uh, as for the uh, Georgian citizens who reside in, uh, in those territories, we, as I said, we regard them as our nationals. Mm -hmm and they can travel free, uh, enjoy all the benefits as other Georgian nationals uh, do have. Uh, all they have to do is uh, to have proper, uh, proper documents, and this is it. Can they travel freely to get their, is there a problem with them getting their documents? There is no problem on our part. Uh, the problem is that uh, the authorities in control are not letting these people to acquire those documents. And like, do, do Georgian financial institutions, are there, what, are there any, uh, I guess, businesses that are based in Georgia that still have a presence in these two, two areas? Well, we, we have free trade agreement with the European Union, free trade agreement with our neighboring countries, with China, with many in the world. And we do want those who live in those occupied territories to enjoy those benefits. And the plan, uh, the step towards better future, also stipulates that to somehow address this issue. However, the readiness on the part of the central government should be, uh, can, can only materialize if the authorities in control uh, allow those uh, people who live under the occupation to, to act on, uh, on that.